Hey everybody, welcome to the 72 PC Podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. This week again, we are playing Battlefield 4, and the lovely podcasters and players playing Battlefield 4 are Eric. Yeah. And I'm leaving time for Tom. Oh, okay, yeah, Tom needs a minute. Um, Oh, yeah, no. I'm Adam. What's up, everybody? It's, It's your boy. I'm not a beautiful player. I'm I'm garbage. And yeah, that's Tom. Tom's on the podcast. What's up, Tom? I uh, y- you know, uh getting shot, stuff like that. Yeah. Um Yeah, so uh I'm I'm the absolute god of bad luck or the the god of uh manufactured hardware deficiencies. Oh yeah. However you want to view it. Oh yeah. Uh this week has been great. Um, so first of all, go ahead and fill time. I got to get into costume. Oh my God. Oh, God. oh I think I know what's happening so, here. <laughs> um, for those of you not in the oh, discord, Jesus. Tom got hella comfortable yeah. the other day. <laughs> and when I say hella comfortable, like, oh my I, God. I don't know how else to word it. Omi, thank you for the sub. Yes. Four months. Thank you, Omi. Nice. And same, uh, same heroic. Thank you there for three. Yes. Heroic saying with the three. Okay, yeah, so first, um, first things first. The, the green screen. <laughs> first, first things first. Yes. I am a clear key. dinosaur. I am, I am very stealthy. Um, I now have to replace my Valve Index cable. You know, the, the thing that I bought for a thousand bucks for the second time. Now, as Valve explains this, it is currently out of warranty. Understandable. But I have also had to replace the headset the controllers, which was my fault, admittedly, and the cable now, and the cable for a second time. They did say, hey, we're going to give you this as a customer service gesture, but don't count on getting them anymore. So that's fine. Like, I, I honestly don't really care about that. What I, what I do care about is when I ask them, cool, that's fine that the warranty is over and I'm not getting them for free. It's totally fine. I will buy it. How do I give you money for this? And their answer was, sorry. They're not for sale. Um, so I, I we manufactured a headset that clearly has a defi- or a defect with its cabling, and we're going to cut you off from the cabling and not sell it to you. That's messed up. I don't fucking get it, guys. I really, really, really don't. And wasn't their customer service like really exceptional until this point? Uh, yeah, and like, didn't and you deal with them multiple like- times, and it was great. Yeah, like they ha- they've never been rude to me to be fair. But like I there's some like fucking cognitive dissonance here of hey, we're not going to replace these for free cuz you're out of warranty. Cool dog. Totally fine with that. I understand how these things work. Can I buy it or pay for a repair? No, we don't really do that here. <laughs> so how do I fix <laughs> your broken ass hardware? <laughs> yeah. Like I like I'm I'm going to send them a very pointed message saying this, but I don't want to interrupt the the process of getting another free cable. So I'm trying to bite my tongue a little bit until I have it in my hands. Um, but what the fuck? Like, like what are you I'm supposed either... to do? <laughs> like, I, apparently, it's an impossible I, I situation. To, I buy a new, new? A new Valve Index for a thousand bucks, and my old one is just a fucking brick. That's that's that apparently is not, the solution. That is not. So, if this was an OG Vive, I could get the. I'm sorry, we don't support that long. anymore. It's yeah. out of life for us. Yeah, like like the Vive has had its time. There's even a new version of it. Two new versions of it. Like, I get it. But this, Dude, is, this like, is their flagship. That's, yeah, yeah, that's that's rough. I wonder what the what's the deal with that. Like, yeah, that, I kind of. Like, Does anybody I, else I have this problem? Like, have you looked yeah, it up? Yeah, several people. Oh. Yeah. And they're just so like, oh, sorry. Yeah, all, all throughout the the Valve Index subreddit, people are complaining. They're like, hey, yeah, Valve keeps replacing my cable, but, like, there's one guy on Amazon that sells these for, like, 140 bucks, and that's it. And they take, like, three weeks to get here. So um, I did what any rational person would do. Um, I did go ahead and buy the cable on Amazon as well as get the replacement from Valve. Because I figured if I'm going to be without a cable and Valve isn't going to give me the option to get a new one, I should probably have a stock. 
<laughs> yeah. Or especially well. if it's going to take three weeks because it's not That's something big, where, yeah. oh, I could tell it's going bad. It's no, it just doesn't fucking work. No, so that's the other thing. You can tell it's going bad. So I knew oh, really? earlier, earlier last week it was getting bad because occasionally, like I thought, thought I was imagining things. I thought I was paranoid because I'm really like sensitive to this now that it happened. But I'm like, did I, did I see like a little sparkle there? Did I see like a blip in my, in my visual field? And then like you notice it more and more. It's like a static that washes over the headset. And then when it gets really bad, then it uh, actually results in like audio popping. And sometimes like half the picture will go to gray. And sometimes the whole headset will just reboot. Like your, your mic will work. Your audio will work. Sometimes the audio can go out completely too, but it'll just fucking reboot. So like you're playing Pavlov, you're like shooting a guy and then I can't see anything. You're just blind. Like world's best flashbang. Ugh. That's yeah. that, <laughs> that's terrible. Oh my god. It's fucking that awful. Wouldn't, that wouldn't take you out of immersion at all. No. Yeah. And I like I keep I, I did ask Valve, but they never gave me a straight answer. I said, Am I doing something wrong? Every time I'm done using the headset, I unplug things. I like gently, not tightly, very gently, loosely coil things up and sit it on a shelf. That's what I've been doing. I'm not super rough with the cable, but I do play, you know, thousands of hours of VR. It's, is there something I'm doing fundamentally wrong that's breaking these things? They just ignored the question. What am I uh, doing uh, that isn't a normal user? Why <laughs> is your shit breaking? Why is it breaking? Yeah, like at least with the controllers. With the controllers, when they replaced them for free, even though it was my fault, I bashed them together at the speed of light while playing Beat Saber, and I broke them. And Valve was nice and replaced them. But the cable is just like, they're treating it like a fucking consumable. Like, oh no, you have to put gas in your car. Oh no, you have to replace your cable every six months. This isn't great. This is really fucking shitty especially with an item this with this high of a price tag like i don't expect to do that with my micro usbs i use for my controllers and everything else like exactly. i expect those to last a few years unless yeah. i lose one and even micro with usb like was by far one of the worst connectors ever like those cables regularly died but they still yeah. apparently last way longer than the index um so i don't know i'm looking at like uh, I know uh, Magic Dave in our community has a pulley system, which is really cool, but my ceilings are way too fucking up there to do that. And I'm not drilling anything or putting 3M strips up there. So now I'm looking at like kind of the Ikea, like weighted base boom thing to maybe hoist the cable above me. I, and even then, like Valve won't tell me what I'm doing wrong. So I don't even know if that's enough to keep the, the cable life like a little longer than six months. I've got no fucking idea. Spend five dollars on a cable at a gas station last three years. <laughs> Spend a thousand dollars on a cable from Valve last three fucking months. Like I don't, I don't fucking get it. Um, it. It's a good thing that there are these Amazon sellers who are clearly seeing a need that's not being fulfilled by Valve and making their cash. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, for fuck's sake, I don't want to spend a hundred and forty bucks every six months to like get my thousand dollar purchase to actually work. Yeah, that's, I mean, okay, I'm just going to go and say it. It's a luxury fucking item. Luxury items are supposed to have a degree of like, you anticipate a very high bar of what this is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a fucking awful experience. Yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. Now, again, I don't, I don't want to come off as too negative, right? Valve has been very, very good in their customer service. I'm out of warranty currently. Like, they could just say no. But the fact that they don't even have a way out, like, outside of the warranty process, they don't have a way for me to replace parts of the headset is kind of unconscionable. Because the headset itself is built with replacement parts in mind. Everything from the, the fucking headphones are individualized. It's just one screw and you pop them off um, to the cable itself is like completely user serviceable and replaceable without any screwdrivers whatsoever. Um, and, but Valve doesn't sell any parts and I, I don't get it. It almost feels like an Apple situation, dare I say. So <laughs> could this be possibly because there are previous forays into hardware where they made a fuck ton of Steam Links, a fuck ton of controllers, to the point where they're giving them away for five dollars a shot at the end because they just had too much. Could they have done the inverse? They didn't expect the index to do this well. 
they didn't have a stock of these things. And now they've sold and gave them all out because they're having a manufacturing issue. So they don't have anything to give back to you now. So the problem is twofold. Uh, one, yes, you're exactly right. When when uh, they released the trailer for Half-Life Alex, they had a set amount of stock sitting back of headsets. They're like, yeah, we'll probably sell this much. Um, Half-Life Alex increased that demand way, way, way beyond their capacity, right? Remember, they were like two to three months backlogged on even getting the headsets because they literally couldn't physically manufacture them fast enough. This cable is a specialty cable. It does a whole lot. It's not like just some dumb USB device, um, but it's a whole lot of functionality bundled into one thing. It's pretty specialized. It's pretty technical. And as far as I know, only two places in the world can manufacture them and they are all back ordered. So Valve is buying as many as they can, but they just can't produce them fast enough. So even if they were to be for sale, I might have to wait two months to get that cable. Yeah, that's that's fucking rough, man. And for me, I play my VR like once every month or two now. Like I don't play it a ton. You're on your VR a lot. Almost every day, <laughs> at least six days a week. Like that would be like me saying, okay, I can't use my uh, 360 controller or an Xbox controller for four or five months now. Like that yeah. would be unfathomable. Even though I don't even play as much Rock League anymore, that would still really fucking suck. So uh, would, yeah. the the cable I bought on Amazon said, oh, hey, it's going to arrive in mid-March. Um, and that that sucked. So I looked again last night. Apparently a different seller also has a cable. It uh, looks like a lot of people are starting to get into manufacturing these. Huh, wonder why. Um, but that should arrive tomorrow. So, hey. Yeah. Did it have a speed premium in the price? Yep. Uh, so that's what I figured. It's like, hey, I can get you the yep. same cable quicker, but it's going to cost you. <laughs> it's a nice cable you got there. It'd be a shame if something happened to it. <laughs> All right. So yeah. because I am the god, not, not demigod, just straight up god of hardware defects, let's talk about the Pi Boy, D Pi Boy uh, DMG. So... This thing is actually really fucking cool. Let me let me grab some of this so you can see a nice view of it. Well, while he does that, I'll just point out again, yes, I love that dinosaur outfit. <laughs> also, Eric, join Team Golf. Okay. We switch teams. Teams will switch be switched teams. next time yes. around. That way we can all be in the okay, same. Okay, I apologize. This is kind of in pieces, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say why. But this is the Pie Boy DMG. This is a super super cool uh, case for a Raspberry Pi. Fits the zero, three, four, whatever. You slap a Raspberry Pi in here. It's got buttons. It's got a rechargeable lithium ion battery. It's got a screen. Um, it's it's fucking beautiful. It's an like an open source fucking Game Boy. That's it. So I saw that and I was wondering if that was a colored screen that would also double as a game gear. It is a color screen. It's just an well, LCD then, screen. That's it. Well, then in that case, like that should also work for like game gear slash Sega too. Granted, you would oh, need no. to have it. No, 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 no. It gets way, way better. This is a Raspberry Pi 4. It'll run any game you throw at it. So full speed Dreamcast, PlayStation, half speed PS2. Yeah, they all work on it. Um, it's really fucking cool. Like it's a complete like emulation based handheld in a Game Boy form factor with a rechargeable battery. And by the way, it's got HDMI on the side. So if you want to turn it into a regular console, you could do that too. That's really nice. Okay. So now let's get into why it sucks. <laughs> the screws are made of butter. What? <laughs> the screws are made of butter. That is not a put them on toast? sentence. Okay. I mean, so, it, it is a sentence, just not one you would ever expect. It's not a, it's a brand new sentence is what that is. I'm this, seeing Tom take a stick of butter, nobody take has like ever a said that knife, and chisel, like whittle away to make a screw out of a stick of butter to try to put this thing back together. I wish. I wish it were even that cool. It's honestly a pretty, pretty stupid, boring tale that infuriated me to no end today. Uh, I it honestly ruined my day up until I made lunch, which we can also talk about. 
Um, okay. So, <laughs> oh my God, you're on this, one today, Tom. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I told you the big thing on my list for this podcast is Tom rants. Um, so is that the big thing on your list all weeks? We just don't call them that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So I, I get, I get the pie. It's a full kit. It's super, super fucking well-designed. There's no soldering. There's no like, um, weird bullshit. It's not like a hundred teeny screws in a million different places. It's like standard Phillips head, smush the components down together. They all click into place and that's it. It is super fucking well-designed. Um, the issue is that the screws are made out of butter. I don't know if it's aluminum or butter, but <laughs> if you add the slightest pressure on that screwdriver, it tears it up. And they give you a screwdriver. So it's not like I'm using like like a, a big ass like impact hammer of a screwdriver here that I have laying around. So I'm using their tools on their kit. And like, I'm not even kidding you, literally half of the screws strip out. And luckily they came with extras. So I put in the extras, those got stripped too. So I managed to take the thing apart, fix the cable that was loose because there's one of the cables that were loose, put it back together. But now the one screw is stripped so badly that I can't get it back out in all of my componentry that I'm trying to get working is stuck in the goddamn chassis. Brutal. Oh. The fuck. So I literally unscrew everything else, get it by the corner, tear it apart. So now I have destroyed the case. And as I'm going to fix that loose cable, it's not a cable. It's actually the thing that the ribbon cable slots into isn't properly soldered to the board. So the component just fucking lifts off the PCB. Just fucking lifts off. Like, not even goddamn attached. Hey, no wonder I can't read my SD cards. It's not attached to the goddamn board. That is awful. Uh, that is awful. I sent off a strongly worded email. So I poured okay, some Karen. whiskey, and uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Did you ask for some managers today, Tom? I, I think I asked for resignations. Honestly, my my email my email was pretty nice. I said, look. All the screws fucking stripped. This thing wasn't soldered properly and it fell off. I feel like I wasted my money. I, what should I do? This is basically spare parts because I'm not going to solder it myself. Hopefully they say, oh yeah, we'll send you a UPS shipping label and we'll give you your money back. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do the fucking like PayPal chargeback thing because fuck that. Um, Maybe you'll get lucky and they'll say, oh, we're sorry. Here's a new one. <laughs> so... When, when I thought it was just the case that was broken, they do have other cases in different colors, including Atomic Purple, but that was out of stock, so I got Clear, which is also cool, because that was on my original Game Boy Pocket. Um, so I figured, all right, 10 bucks, I'll get a new case, I'll make this problem go away. And then the connector fell off. I, Jesus fuck, there's like... Lost <laughs> I I did order... The issue is that these are four weeks, like four to six weeks back ordered because everyone and their mother wants one. And the one I get has fucking butter screws and the components aren't soldered together. And uh, yeah, so I, I ordered the assembled one because they test them before they go out. So has anyone else had the issues with the screws? I don't know. I didn't get that far. I was ranting and raving so hard <laughs> by that point. I decided to drink whiskey and cook a steak. Oh, did you feel better after that? I mean, I felt well, I mean, okay. it was it's whiskey and a steak. How couldn't you feel better after that? I, I wouldn't say I felt better, but I definitely felt more fulfilled. <laughs> like I had a very uh, an air of fullness around me. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So so it sounds like uh, yeah. your week kind of sucked. It was goddamn fucking awful. Honestly, honestly, the week was fine. Uh, it was really just today was a goddamn trash fire. You'll have that. It yeah. happens. Rough day, but oh well. What about you, Adam? How was your week? I went to Flavor Town this week. Oh, oh you did do it? I went to Flavor Town. So I'm browsing uh, DoorDash because I'm a, a lazy piece of garbage. And I see That's Guy Fieri's Flavor Town Kitchen. And I had to try it because. You know, Guy Fieri, he's kind of a meme, even though, like, 
he's a legitimate chef and like seems like a cool guy, I guess. But he's become a, a subject of many internet memes, so I had to try it. Yeah. Um. So, are you guys familiar with ghost kitchens? I think no, there are a couple yeah. of other terms for it. So, this isn't a place I can go and eat. This is only something I can get on like DoorDash or Grubhub or Uber Eats or one of those. Um, basically, I think there are a couple different business models. One of them is uh, these ghost kitchens can basically just, they have a kitchen that makes all of their food, but that doesn't have any kind of dining area. Like it's almost like a, almost like a food factory, right? And then they only service delivery orders through DoorDash and stuff. Or, and, and like in the case with this one, they can use an existing restaurant to service their thing. So Guy Fieri's Flavor Town Kitchen is made by the people of a local uh, Italian food chain. Like, okay. <laughs> like, uh, you guys have probably been there. Brio at the green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's the address yeah, for Guy Fieri's Flavor Town okay. Kitchen. So apparently they also make those. I don't know how that works. I'm assuming they just like ship them ingredients and then like show them exactly how to make it and stuff. Um, I so I don't know if they have like separate staff for that or how that all works. But but yeah, it's kind of interesting. I didn't I didn't know about these things until fairly recently. It is um, a recent phenomenon. I think sure. like during pandemic, it's really became a thing. Mm. And it's probably a win win, right? Like people have opportunities to open their business and. Um, I'm sure like Brio Italian Kitchen might have been struggling because of the pandemic and now they can service all these delivery orders for not only their food, but another restaurant entirely. Well, and think of places that are more generic-ish like an Applebee's. Like, yeah. how many people are actually going to DoorDash Applebee's? Like, if you're not going there, you're not ordering from there. So their kitchen probably is relatively slow so mm -hmm. they can benefit from being able to maybe lease out effectively their kitchen. Yeah. So yeah, it was kind of interesting. So how uh, was it? But yeah, it was, it was good. I mean, it's your kind of typical over-the-top American food. So I got a bacon mac and cheese burger. Okay. Which was very tasty and very filling. But the, um, the burger was $13 and no fries. Like, just the same oh. $13. That's a pretty expensive sandwich. Yeah, so it's a little pricey. I'm I'm sure a, a lot of that is because it's you know the branding and the stuff. Name. But yeah, but no, it was like it was a really good burger. Um, it was over the top, but it was good. And then I got the mac uh, and cheese burgers are legit. Yeah, I'm I'm I really really love mac and cheese too. Um, but yeah, it was good. And then I got these jalapenos wrapped in bacon and grilled with barbecue sauce and pimento cream cheese on the inside. Dude. Um, that was pretty good too. Dude. <laughs> uh, that, was all, that was also like $12. Um, but yeah. So it's good shit, but it's pricey shit. Yeah. If you're in the mood for over the top American food and budget is not a concern. Yeah. Try it. It might be in your area and your DoorDash. I'm gonna have to see if we have those in this area. So I'm curious. Though also I fear the prices here. If it's thirteen dollars where you're at, man, it'll be like a twenty five dollar yeah, burger here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which I love me a good uh bacon cheddar burger or bacon mac and cheese burger, but no way and fuck am I paying twenty five for it. Yeah, that's, so, uh, that's pretty cool. I, I sous vide at a steak, and beyond that, I got a can of fire. A what can, a can of, fire, of fire, huh? I, I got a, a kitchen torch. Oh, nice. So it's... I I usually um, end up, like, pan searing the steak after I sous vide, and it works fine, but, like, it takes a while, and sometimes it can, like, add a variation in like the steak texture that I don't really want. Cause the sous vide gets everything like perfect. Like, Hey, this is going to be medium rare. That's it. And then when I sear it, if I can, if I leave it on for even a little bit too long, at a little bit too high of a temperature, it can kind of make that, you know, variation in the steak. And I yep. didn't want that. So I got the torch and God damn, that thing tastes like it came off a grill. It's <laughs> fucking delicious. 
Like it's got a little bit of that like smoke charred taste to the outside. It's oh my god, it was amazing. So I combined that with some green beans, some baked potatoes, dude. I was in heaven. It sounds like so it. I started it with good. pants. I started with pan searing with sous vide, and then I started doing some bigger roast things. So I had to start torching, and then I torched mm -hmm. a few steaks and went back to pan. Torching's the way to go. It just really is. I, I'm with you 100. I, I prefer the torch. I really, really like it. Oh, the other night we did uh, we did burgers in the sous vide, and those, <laughs> other than the problem of them being way too fucking big, like these were like novelty style <laughs> or novelty size big ass burgers. Um, other than them being way too fuck, wow, I got killed. Um, <laughs> other than them being way too fucking big, they were delicious. Like you bit in, and it was just like fucking perfectly cooked, juicy burger all throughout. It was amazing. I am not great at cooking burgers, so I'm gonna have to try sous vide sometime. Like it's I have the issue if I make them too big and cooking them conventional when they're too thick can be really difficult because you'll burn the shit out of the outside to get the center done. Yeah, I, I would recommend searing on those just because the pan can give you kind of that that crispy. That crisp. Yeah, the crispy yeah. edge on the outside that you really need in a burger. A torch is going to give you like some of that flavor, but not really the texture that you want. You sear that shit in butter. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what I did. It was everything. Perfect. Cover oh. it all in butter. Also, yeah. I used your tip. Instead of doing oil on the steak when I seasoned it and threw it in the bag, I just fucking like rubbed that shit with butter. Just slathered the whole thing with butter, throw it in the bag, and then like it's cooking in the butter. Yeah. Just, Jesus, it should be fucking illegal. I <laughs> um I cut butter into like little itty bitty strips, like probably 164th teaspoon strips, and I put those strips on the steak. Yeah. So then they, yeah, yeah. That's basically what I did, but in a way messier way. I just grabbed some butter and rubbed that shit everywhere. I'm seeing Tom steak in left hand, butter stick of butter in right hand, just bam, and then just rubs it all together. It's like I'm charging up the paddles to bring someone back to life. No, um, but yeah, I'm glad you liked. I I really think that's the best way to do the steaks. Add a little butter in there with fresh garlic, fresh thyme. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the deal. You guys are ah, making me so, hungry. I was just thinking before we started the cast that, like, oh, I should have like eaten something. I'm, I didn't realize I was hungry, but now it's too late. And you guys are making it way worse, honestly. So if you're you, welcome. If you could stop, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm not even hungry at all. I ate right before the cast as a responsible cast host. <laughs> not a joke. Uh, but anyway, I mean, games. Anyone planning this week? Because no. So far, we've got Tom Unless Rant and a lot of food. <laughs> I did a little bit of Battlefield 4, and it's Same. fun as always. And I did some Escape from Tarkov, also fun. I did some, uh, I've been doing night raids in Escape from Tarkov, and that's been a oh, lot of fun. I you ballsy, you ballsy son of a gun. Uh, it's not, I mean, it's not that much more expensive than a, than a normal run. Um, like 50, 60K maybe for the night vision goggles and stuff and it's just it's just cool like it completely changes the feel of the game with the immersion and stuff um it's it's a lot of fun i actually got i've never go ahead i've never ran one intentionally oh did you, you did the accidental I, night I, raid <laughs> i say yeah exactly i say intentionally oh. i accidentally went the wrong side yeah that's a bad that's a bad we need to do a night raid eric i think you would like it sometimes they're really chill and then sometimes you get a sweaty squad that's trying to kill everybody in a night raid. <laughs> it could go either way. But a lot of times it's really, really chill. It would um, be nice. Yeah. So I had I like some, me some chill raids. Yeah. I had some good night raids. I had a couple of bad night raids. And so today I was doing a scav run. And I... It was, I was on my way into old gas station from the new area. Eric, you're familiar with that. Um, I'm yeah. just outside that like metal doorway and I hear somebody. So I wait and he comes running out and I gun him down. Dude has like not good armor, but like a really, really nice M4, like completely decked out with the absolute top tier ammo in it with 60 round mags. Oh, like this nice. is an expensive gun. I don't know if he like killed somebody and took it or something because it was it's like yet the, not. 995 is that yeah, what it is m995 yeah. yeah he had tons of that and then he was like 
he had that blue armor, like that crappy blue armor and helmet. No shit. Yeah. So I'm, like I'm thinking he was rounds. a low. Yeah, I'm thinking he just got a kill on whoever had that M4 to begin with. Yeah, because three rounds of that M4 are worth more than that fucking armor he's running. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so I kill him, and I'm looting him, and I'm dealing with all the stuff he has. And I hear another set of footsteps. And it's on the other side of that wall where he came from, too. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to wait here. Um, and wait for him to come through the door, too. And turns out he wasn't through the door. He had jumped on my side of the wall. And as I was prone laying there, he shot me in the head. And that crappy blue helmet deflected the bullet. And I stood up. I turned around and I gunned him down. <laughs> Holy <What>? shit. <laughs> the fucking like UN blue helmet. Yeah. I got a lucky Rick. I mean, every helmet in the game has a ricochet chance. And that was the ricochet. <laughs> Oh my god. I was god. so I was I was gonna be so upset because it was such a good run and I had a lot of great loot and that also that awesome M4 and stuff. Like I was pumped, I was ready, I was gonna get out of there. And then this guy shows up and he could have just ruined my life, but I got that lucky, lucky ricochet chance on the helmet and his headshot did nothing to me and I turned around and, and killed him. And I made it out of the raid, so I was that's disgusting. <laughs> he makes the cheeky play. He fucking completely catches you off guard and then gets fucked with RNG. It's not a cheeky play. It's a cheeky breaky play. It cheeky breaky play. Yes. Yes. I got to remember my Tarkov vernacular. Yeah. It was a scav run. And man, yeah. I've noticed they, they have been messing with the game a lot, like on small stuff that is making a big difference from what I've been doing. Like they're adjusting like vendor availability on items and prices. Oh yeah, and it's helped me a ton. And it's, I, yeah, it's weird. It's been crazy trying to keep up with everything and all the changes. It ta- like there was a metal fuel can that one vendor would sell, and it would typically sell out within five minutes of stocking. And on the flea market, it was going for eight hundred thousand, but he sold it for like one hundred fifty thousand. So, like, huge, massive markup. Like, the last two days, they've adjusted the amount of them they had, and the price on the market has went from, like, 800000 down to, like, 250000 Just from, like, these little tweaks they're doing, it is just putting a monster fluctuation in the market. Yeah. It's just nuts. How's your economy sitting? Um, I hit 5 mil for the first time ever on nice. Thursday. I dipped back under because I had to get shit to make another graphics card and bought a lot of fuel and stuff like that. But yeah, right. I'm I'm a big boy now. I have officially well. hit the five mil mark. <laughs> I got an items stone. case on accident. I accidentally spent two and a half mil in the game. <laughs> that that kind of hurt. But um, oh, oh well, just like a misclick. Yeah. So I was um, so it was in euros. So this game has multiple currencies and different vendors deal in different currencies. And I was curious, I'm like, how much does items case cost? It's like, okay, it's like 15,300 euros. Like, what is that in rubles? So I go to the uh, exchange where you would buy the euros. I put in the amount and it tells you how many rubles it's going to be. Like, okay, it's like two and a half mil rubles. No big deal. I meant to escape back, but I hit confirm and I bought all (laughs) the fucking euros. At least at that point... (laughs) You don't get it back, so I'm like, fuck yeah. it, I'll just buy the item. At least you were at that, uh, like, it was something you were interested in. Yes, yes. It wasn't like I accidentally bought two and a half million rubles of, like, PS ammo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever but accidentally be- deleted right. something when you were trying to, like, link search it or something? No, but I use seen something? people... I've seen clips of people deleting away thick cases. <laughs> oh, no. Which is, like, oh, a $25 no. oh, million dollar case. Oh man, that would be rough. The worst thing I've done is accidentally used a whole sugar. Like trying to like was, that's a hundred K mistake. Like, yeah, like trying to see how much it is and accidentally click use all instead of uh <laughs> uh item Whoops. search. Like, oh no, okay. Well, there goes that hundred K. I've accidentally turned in a uh, quest item for a craft before. Oh that kind of sucks. sucks too. But yeah, uh, Tarkov, I haven't been running as many raids. I've just been doing a lot of the offline stuff. Ran a few scav raids. And I swear to God, 
I started this week needing two scav kills over 40 meters. I've ran multiple raids this week, like probably about five or six. I still need one more. There's no fucking scavs when you want them. I swear uh, to God, they disappear when I need them. Oh, man. Which map it's are you It's like playing? when I need a use deck, I find nothing but fucking bears. Yeah. <laughs> what map do you need scav kills on? Any. Any map? Huh. Oh, I wish I'd give your game. I just hit like a 500 meter headshot. Oh, nice. Sorry. I just got really excited. But yeah, <laughs> um, so I've been hemorrhaging on this. I've been running Mosin after Mosin after fucking Mosin. Uh, Good thing is you always get Mosins back on insurance because no one wants that fucking trash. Yeah, that's true. But anyway, enough of Tarkov. We talk enough about that. We do talk about Tarkov um, a lot. Tom, you got a list of shit. I do. But I don't care about half of that. Actually, I don't care about most of that. I want one thing and one thing only. Fucking Rogue Heroes ruins a Tassos. How is it? Uh, it's Zelda. I mean, it's not Zelda, but it's it's Zelda. It's Zelda. Okay. A new not do, Zelda do game. Like Zelda? Which one? They're it's, drastically different depending on which one you play. Uh, it's Four Swords Adventures. I don't. It even makes know what me think of Hammer Watch. It makes me think a lot of Hammer Watch, only less hordes of enemies. So, Four Swords Adventures is Link to the Past, basically, but four-player multiplayer. This game is not a love letter to Four Swords Adventures. It is a Four Swords Adventures. Um, the, the game could not be any more similar if it tried, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Four Swords Adventures is something that Nintendo tried. They experimented a couple times with it. It was a great fucking idea. I love the hell out of it. But, uh, yeah, they never really went back to it it just kind of fell apart like a lot of great nintendo things pokemon snap until recently excuse me <laughs> um, but uh yeah it's it's fun it plays like zelda it's got a bunch of items um there's some like light puzzly bits there's a big focus on combat in this game um and you gotta go through dungeons and you level up and get currency and upgrade your town and it's kind of neat uh, there's not really a, a whole lot to it. Um, I don't know, it's fun. It's a game I kind of thought about a little bit. If if you're into like Zelda or if you really, really liked Four Swords Adventures back in the day, I can 100% recommend this game. If okay. you never played it and you're not super interested, uh, go ahead and skip it. Like I said, it caught my attention because it looked a lot like Hammer Watch to me, and I enjoyed the shit out of some Hammer Watch. Hammer yeah. Watch was cool. I enjoyed that, yeah. I I dug it. I like that. It's still an old, it's old school style, but it's got the modern sensibilities of like how items work, the randomization of it, how you can actually have different tiers of loot. So it's not just you found a sword. You found an axe, but there's actual qualities associated to stuff. And hammer watch. Yeah. That is. Yeah, this this is a lot of fun. I do really like it with four people. The one issue I do have is that um the UI is how do I want to say this? It's exactly the same for everybody, which sounds like a really weird complaint. But it plays like it's couch co-op while being online. So like couch co-op, like every player has got a different color associated with them, like different colored names and stuff like that. But the issue is that it's just like the iconography on the HUD. Um, your characters can look like anything and you just kind of got to remember who you are. And one shit gets heavy and like it's really heated up and there's a bunch of shit on screen, you can easily lose your place. It's not like they've got a big arrow pointing to, this is your character. It literally looks exactly the same on everybody's screen. So nothing is individualized to player one sitting in front of their computer. Instead, it's optimized for four people doing couch co-op. I like that approach, though. I mean, it's, it's nice. It's not the worst thing in the world, but... It's a little weird with online co-op because it doesn't it doesn't translate the quality of life stuff doesn't translate well in those modes. As long as you can each pull up your own contextual menus. No. You, you can't, can't even that? 
Okay. No, that so part every, everything is locked. So if I start dialogue, um, it locks like, that dialogue window onto everybody's screen. Oh, no. What I mean is like if you try to pull up your inventory, does it pull your inventory up on everyone's screen? Um, you don't actually get inventory. Like you, oh, you okay. hit the bumpers to move items. Okay. But if you pause, yeah, it pauses for everybody. Or if you talk right. to every anyone, or if you like, you're gonna be shopping in the shop, looking around to buy stuff. If somebody can walk out the door, it'll take the whole party out the door. Okay. Which I don't know if I act if I actively dislike because there were issues where like I had I had like one HP left, right? I was fucking dead, and Acro and uh, and Comrade Bunny would run off and like hit the door and pull me through to the next room. So I didn't have to take the chance of getting, getting murdered. Um, so there's, there's definitely some like strategic benefits to it. It's not all bad. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'll pick it up. It's just, it's something that tickled my, like I saw it. And I'm like, Hmm, kind of curious. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of fun. Um, definitely early access, definitely indie. Um, it's not it's not bad. Uh the desync issue is annoying. So you will pretty regularly. The game does auto save often enough, but you will pretty regularly um get issues where like one person opened up a dialogue box and none of us could close it and to them they had closed it, but the game states didn't synchronize, so we were uh... locked. We had to all like exit the game, relaunch it and get back in. That sucks. But, you know, new game stuff. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. God, I hate that statement. Why do I keep saying it? <laughs> so it um, is not what it is. <laughs> are there are there any upcoming games you guys are excited for? Pokemon. And Pokemon. And Pokemon. <laughs> and Horizon. Half Life 3. Which is, which is getting pushed. It sounds like it's getting pushed anyway. Horizon Forbidden West. Mm -hmm. Is there a new near game too? Are you gonna pick that up? Yes. Yes. Replicant? I will. I will be picking that game up because I really want to know where the fuck they go after the way Autonoma ended. Like, I have no fucking clue how that's going to, where they're going to go with that now. <laughs> like, it's going to be fucking nutty. Is it one of those where it doesn't need a sequel? No, I didn't. Or is it one that, like, you don't know where I... they're going to go with it because the story is so crazy, or you don't know where they're going to go with it because it wrapped up nicely and it seems. It wrapped up beautifully. Oh, like okay. I, I can't speak highly enough about that game. The way it ended, everything, all twenty-three of the endings, the way it just <laughs> happened is just great. All twenty-three of the endings. Twenty-three. I mean, I, I actually I pulled that number out of the out of my ass, but I think that's pretty fucking close to how many actual endings they were, because they had end states for all sorts of things. Mm. Like at the very beginning of one of the runs, you're supposed to go this way. If you go the opposite way. They give you a dialogue about how your character abandoned his mission and how all these people died for him not doing what he was supposed to do. Game <laughs> over. And that was an ending. Oh. So, like, they had some it jokey hurt, ones, man. but they also had some more, like, actual legit endings, and they had more contextual endings. Like, it was, it's, it's hard to explain, but some of them were super jokey. Some where you did really cool shit, or you died in a really interesting way. Oh, okay. Huh. But yes, I, I'm excited about that. And then Pokemon Snap. Who the fuck is not excited for that that has a yeah. Switch? They, um, I was watching that uh, Pokemon Direct, and it was interesting. They're adding some more elements to it. So you always had the food, and you always had one other thing. Now you can sing to them, and you can make them glow. But you're still trying to get pictures of them when they're doing weird things. But they're adding social media kind of elements where you can upload your pictures after you've edited them, like field of view and aspect, all aspects and all of that of your photo, like you would a real like camera kind of thing. Upload it, and then you get people like upvote it and shit like that, and you'll get credits, and there's like a leaderboard for top voted pictures and stuff. So it's kind of cool to see Nintendo actually doing some internet kind of stuff with the game. So, of course, they're going to fuck it up because it's Nintendo. But <laughs> I'm really excited if they pull that off because that would be really cool. I like that, that they're awesome. adding more more camera features. Like, with all the different camera modes in games now and all the options they give you, I mean, it's it's an obvious next step for Pokemon Snap to yeah. actually implement a lot of that stuff. 
So when you're actually taking the pictures, it's still straight up as it was. But oh. after you take the picture, they let you adjust like depth of field and stuff like that. It looks like nice. like they're going to let you edit the picture and not in the Photoshop way, but in a legitimate like yeah. if you were to put these settings on a camera kind of way, mm. which is really cool. Yeah, it's awesome. And honestly, could get some people into actual photography because that shit's really cool. But yeah, I'm hyper excited about that because what? Haven't had a Pokemon Snap in what now? Like 15 years? 17 years? Something like that? In a long ass time. My only concern is they let us aim with the joystick and not have to do the fucking maneuvers with the switch to aim your camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, I agree with you. I know we we've beaten this dead horse a lot, but fucking Nintendo, man. <laughs> yeah, we've you hate definitely. any company as much <laughs> as you also love them quite like Nintendo. Uh yeah, probably. Valve, definitely. They infuriate me as often as uh as I'm happy with them. That's just because they don't know how to count to three. Well, I mean that's the main reason. Okay, that was bullshit. I saved whoever just got knifed. I'm sorry. Um, that was me. <laughs> what, about, what about you, Adam? You excited about any? Um, yeah, I don't know when any of them are coming out, though. Um, I'm ex excited for Hellblade 2. And also, Ninja Theory is doing this thing called Project Mara, where it's, it's like a small-scale horror game, but they're going really crazy with the modeling of this apartment. Like, to the point of... Like you can zoom in on the textures and see the dust on the the floor, like that kind of. Like they're they're doing okay. a lot of. They're trying. I think they're trying to use a lot of new technology and stuff to like, really map out this small apartment. To be way more real, I guess, than games are doing now, with the textures and things. That's cool. So they they actually have a like a dev diary video up on that. I would recommend watching it because it is interesting. I'd be curious to see well, how it translates to a game, but um. I'm I'm curious to see what they do with that cuz I'm all about small like environment horror games PT etc. I was just giving PT as an example of like yeah. proving that this idea of a small environment can work and if you make it hyper detailed that could be really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of the in-engine stuff they'd shown is really really good looking <laughs> but obviously we don't know if if any of that's going to translate to a game. You never in engine stuff is always ridiculous, and then you have to, you know, limit the game if accordingly so that it, it runs. Yeah, if they're showing it, it's probably as good as it'll ever be, and players probably shouldn't expect to see it that way. Oh, at this point, not. any in engine game footage that they show is—I mean, you take that with a grain of salt. But either way, I'm yeah. excited for that. I'm excited for Hellblade Two. Um, there are some that are slipping my mind. I, I know there were others. But those Halo are definitely Infinite, the main ones. Another. I know that's probably not as big for you too, but that's a real one for me. Yeah, not for me. But Man, Scott and I were just going over this damn list. I can't remember. There, there was a, another one I'm forgetting that I'm really yeah. pumped about. But there's, there's a new mainline Pokemon, which I don't know how I feel. They're changing the play style of it. Right when they finally implemented something new that was really cool, they're just completely revamping the game. So I don't know how I feel about that. And then they're re-releasing Diamond and Pearl, which is cool because they did that with... Um, I mean, they've been doing that with a lot of them, and the remakes have been coming out really well, so I'm pretty excited about that. That should be fun. Yeah. I'm a sucker, man. You give me a 20-year-old game, and if it's Pokemon, I'll play it every fucking time you re-release it. <laughs> every fucking time. <laughs> oh, man. I'm trying to remember the last Pokemon game I played. <laughs> Honestly, gold. <laughs> That's the, the last time I played a Pokemon game was gold. I've played... It's not a bad one to leave on. Yeah, it was a I've good game. I've played all of them I since Ruby re-release. I did. I had a big section where I didn't play them though. Like I didn't play after gold until X Y. Oh, okay. Well, no, I, I I did dabble with um the fire red leaf green remakes on GBA. Mm. 
Do you find the new games hold up as well or are as good as you remember the old games being? Or is so, it... I don't know. There's a debate on people who play the newer Pokemons of are they actually getting easier or do we just have rose tinted glasses and they were always easy? Yeah. So I honestly legitimately feel the games have gotten easier to the point where X, XP share isn't a thing anymore. It's just default. So you don't have that. Some people call it quality of life, but you don't have that mechanic of you have to tactically swap your Pokemon to get different things experience. Mm hmm. I think it would be different if they just gave people the option where, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't built in. It wasn't, Hey, you have to do it this way. But like, if you want to just grind one or two, let somebody self-manage that. I think you still can. It's just still the fact of it's for free now. And I was never the most recent one sword and shield. I never had to grind. I never had to stop and grind in an area. I just kept going and going and going and never stopped. Mm -hmm. Like most time in Pokemon games, you end up in a scenario where, okay, I need to sit outside this gym for about 30 minutes, maybe catching some stuff, fighting some stuff because shit, I'm a little under level compared to the leader. It was never the case. I think that's a feature though, isn't it? Like grind should not be a back of the box kind of, Hey, if you play this game, you'll grind. But maybe I, mean, that's I, I don't know <laughs> there, there are There's, games that I think appeal to that I, I don't like it, if you don't have to grind at all I mean that's what Pokemon is is the fighting if you don't have to do anything and you just literally just keep pressing and you always win like you never lose that's boring as oh, shit no 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 it's not like grinding is not winning and losing like it's Pokemon you that. grind so you win you only grind no. when you're losing I mean, there's strategy to it too, right? Like, if you just press A the entire game, you should lose. But if you, like, intelligently say, okay, well, this guy's a fire type. I'm going to use water. Uh, that's entirely different, right? That's not necessarily even, grind. No, even doing that. Like, in the old games, even doing that, I had to grind at points. Yeah, and that's a bug. I don't think that's a bug. bug. I think you need to get to a certain level. And the grinding forces you to encounter new things. Part of the point of that game is to discover new Pokemon, capture new Pokemon. If you don't have to grind, you don't discover them. Like grinding is the discovery feature for that game. I never viewed it that way. I never liked the grind. Because if you don't grind, how are you going to encounter all these different Pokemon? Um, I mean, you just walk through you and just then you use get five and you call it done. You just use Charizard until you win. I'm also not a completionist. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just not. I mean, I don't consider it a completionist, but there's a lot of cool Pokemon. And if you literally yeah. just like, oh, I got my first six, now I'm just going to run gym to gym to gym to gym. I mean, I, I catch or I swap whatever I run into along the way, but I don't go hunting for things. Unless it's like like the special ones, right? Yeah, like I like you want to that have, like, hey, I'm... exactly. Well, there's certain ones like you have to seek out. Like, there's not a whole lot of strong psychic types. A lot of times, there's typically not a whole lot of strong fire types. You have to actually seek them out. Yeah, I could see that. But it's just I feel that it's I don't know. I feel the game has gotten to the point where you just press A the whole time and don't think about shit. Yeah, it is super easy at this point. We, I wasn't even um changing for types. I was just literally keeping my one Pokemon in the entire time, and it worked. So By I way, would be ineffective, and it would work. Yeah. By the way, relentless. Thanks for the raid. Appreciate it. Welcome yeah, everybody. We're level. talking about Pokemon games and how the newer ones are easier. Um, don't, go to, don't you guys think that in general games have gotten easier, like as a whole? No, I think we've gotten better at playing them but I don't think they've gotten fundamentally easier. I mean, I over a long edge. enough time, for sure, I think, right? Like, early video well, games were really challenging because I, they came I, from the arcade era, but I mean... Yeah, that's really the thing you have to keep in mind, is basically once we stopped using quarter munching as a metric of success, then the games, you know, did get easier. But from that point on, I don't think anything's been super different. I, I mean, even RPGs, biggest... though, like Morrowind... Uh, and as compared to Skyrim, that's true. 
I think like, a big difference is there's no longer a emphasis on lives and having to do a large chunk at once and things are broken down into smaller sections where you fail a section, you get right back to it. Mm-hmm. Like look at hardcore mode on Halo. You die once, you have to restart the entire level. That takes it back to its hard roots. But it doesn't mean the mechanics that are needed aren't hard even when you're not playing that mode. Yeah. I so, I mean, it's... So, I think, yes, they've gotten easier, but they've also gotten more difficult. They've definitely gotten more complex, too, which is another thing to keep in mind, right? We're not we're not running to the right, jumping on Goombas and trying to save the princess, and that's that's it, right? So, there's a game like that, but it's not all, you know, copy pasta sort of bullshit. Um there's a lot of that in the industry, but generally games are more complex than, you know, the classical counterparts. It, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's it's a sticky one for me. Like right. I feel that a lot of things have gotten easier, but they're like Dark Souls is a good example where it technically went an easier route where you have all these different save points and stuff. But the gameplay is very nuanced to the point where I wouldn't call it easy. So I, it's I would it's also kind of a niche that. game, too. Yes. I mean, but there are others like there's Neo and Ninja Gaiden I, and all those follow the same thing. I don't think you can call Dark Souls a, a niche game. It, it was literally I mean, one of the top selling franchises. Yeah, but it's it's, it's not a the, but if you're listing of. if you're listing AAA games, that's not the top like the first five that people are going to come that come to mind no right? but it was for it was the top 10 it's Maybe, not call uh, of duty but it's way bigger than like monster hunter yeah i could see that Rel- but, uh, relentless yeah. said um there's a difference to grinding and playing a game the way it's intended grinding is more like destiny where you have to put in hours and hours to gain minimal advantages pokemon doesn't really force it Quite as much, it's pretty decent scaling each section so you don't have to spend too much time grinding random battles. Yeah, not too much time. I I, I don't want it to force me to go for hours. Mm-hmm. But if I have to spend like 15, 20 minutes like fighting some random shit and all of a sudden I find some cool shit doing it as well, like I like that. I appreciate that. Make me discover new things. As, but that's also a big thing. If I'm doing that before every gym, if all I'm finding is fucking like machops everywhere and that's it, that sucks. You have to be able to have variety in the different areas. I, I do want to point out, and this this I think is really the most important point, um, is that on this day of February 20th... What? Tom um, disappeared mid-sentence Sorry. without even knowing. I, what? I completely <laughs> let go of that button. On this day... <laughs> February 27th in the year of our Lord 2021, Dark Souls was brought up on the 72 Pin Connector podcast, but not by Tom. Yes. Eric, the Dark Souls hater, brought up the subject. So let's talk about it for now. Not a hater. Um, I'm a realist. (laughs) You're a hater. Ah. Um, So, anyway. Anyways, Dark Souls. Um, Man, it's been a long time since I've dove into that series. Uh, I've only played really a little bit of the third one (laughs) and a really even smaller amount of the first one. Tom, how do you feel about Dark Souls? You know, anyway. (laughs) um... (laughs) All right, we're not going to do this. Not this time. Okay. No, I I, I will call something out that uh, Relentless pulled up. Um, I love Neo. I thought Neo was really fun. I like the, I, I understand part of the beauty of Dark Souls was a connected world. I like the level based thing with like an overarching world navigation map and how they had like the upgrade system and the training center and stuff. I really thought I really enjoyed that. Never did do two, but I really enjoyed Neil. Anyway, moving on. Tom, you have a lot of games. I do talk about one. All right. I played some Hades, played some CSGO, played some Battlefield and some Rocket League. Um, Oh, hey, Eric, how about that fucking square, that cube? Okay, the for cube. those of you who haven't played it yet, there's a yeah, what cube is mode in Rocket League. It's a cube instead of a ball, and you have unlimited boost. That's it. However, squares bounce weird. End of story. Yes, they bounce fucking weird. Yeah. Um, 
I think that's why a lot of sports aren't really centered around square squares instead of or cubes instead of balls. Everything's about a ball. No, um, yeah, it it's fun, but it is weird. And um, like if let's say the ball's coming off the wall, you see the ball going to the wall, you're gonna pre-jump it to try to read that bounce. Nah, dog. That ball that that ball's not going where you think at all. In fact, it might start going backwards out of nowhere. <laughs> We got saved on a few open nets because as soon as a person went to hit it, that just rotated a weird way and the ball just rocketed to the corner. Oh, man. It was weird. Did you guys actually have fun with it, though? Like, is the mode fun? It's enjoyable. I, I mean, I like the football mode a lot more, but it's, eh. it, it's, it's a good thing to play like maybe five or six games of and then get on to whatever you're really wanting to play. Mm-hmm. I think that football for mode us with snow day. That football mode was maybe one of the only times I've played the extra modes and enjoyed it that time we did on the podcast that time. I actually liked the that football mode. That blew my cool. mind. Yeah. It was very well thought out. I, I enjoyed that. And it made it feel very different, where a lot of the Rocket League modes feel very samey. Yeah. That one felt different. The only other one that really feels different is uh, Heat Seeker. Yeah. Heat Seeker is uh, pretty fucking crazy. But yeah, um, Rocket League. Hey, did some Dota's with Tom and then also with uh, Dottie oh, and Giro. Okay. <laughs> Here we go again. So, so we, we, had, we had one night, the two worst matches of Dota I have played in literal fucking years. And that's, that's a pretty low bar because fucking Dota. Um, so I quit. I yelled. I said, why do I even play this game? This is the worst thing in the world. I'm just wasting you, my time and getting infuriated and just not having any goddamn fun. You rage quitted? I did. I did. Well, I not quit. mid-game, but not after. Mid-game. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I just quit. I jumped out of the channel. I was like, fuck this. I'm just, I'm done playing fucking Dota 2. I, I don't want to do this anymore. Why am I wasting my goddamn life? I could be playing Battlefield 4 or Rocket League or punching myself in the nuts. And anything is going to make me happier than playing Dota 2. 20 hours later, I'm back in queue. God, uh, damn it. So I did possibly one of the nerdiest things I've ever done. So we have a lot of us. That, oh, I shouldn't say a lot of us. We have a good, we have five people to play. And that's all it takes for a full team. So... There's a lot of different compositions you can have on a team. It's like 113 heroes, five different players. There's a lot of different compositions. So we made a spreadsheet rating all these different heroes on all these different attributes. Then there's another sheet where you put together your team composition and then it calculates the team composition for various statistics. Nerdiest thing I've ever spent like three hours of my life ever programming up. It is amazing. <laughs> But yes, uh, Dota is consuming me way too much these days. Like, it's Rocket League levels of time at this point, again. So, fuck. But, yeah, that's all I got. Literally, like, that's all I've got this week for any games. So, it's all you yeah. guys. Yeah, I didn't play that much this week. I really just played some Battlefield 4 and a decent amount of Tarkov. That's it for me. I played a whole lot of VR games, so... Some Blade and Sorcery, which is working nice as an exercise cooldown. Still grand and Beat Saber, but I'm actually lowering my hours on that. Uh, because one night I decided to change up my, my workout and do some VR boxing. Fired up Creed, and that's super polished and a lot of fun. Um, but afterwards, I literally hurt so bad, I couldn't exercise for two days. I was taking Magnesium and Advil, and just everything fucking hurt. Uh, because turns out boxing uses an entirely different muscle group than uh, than Beat Saber does. So, yeah, now I'm adding boxing to that routine. So I'm doing like 20 minutes of that, 15 minutes of Beat Saber, and that's my daily. Um, yeah. Yeah, that also, boxing knob. <laughs> Thrill of the Fight is a way better boxing game, uh, but way less polished. Um, the issue with Creed is that it's got Magic Dave pointed this out, and it made sense. Like, I don't know why I didn't realize this before, but why do you have a VR game with, like, a fucking stamina meter? Your body is the fucking stamina meter, dude. I Is it multiplayer? Yeah. Then that would be why. 
It's to it's give voice. people who are not as stamina versed a chance because the game actually would hinder those who are physically able to keep going. I so mean, kind of level the playing field. That seems like a get good kind of moment, but <laughs> you would think. But anyway, yeah, VR shenanigans until my headset started dying again. Um, it, it's okay because I've got a Kate. Oh. Yay. Tom doesn't have VR. At least, at least I've still got my Game Boy to play. Oh. Oh. Tom's gaming devices are dying. Oh, no. <laughs> well, it's, it should be fine because at least I've got the, the cool, wild, open world of Anthem to always fall back to. Um, okay. <laughs> no, I'm going to talk to this real quick because <laughs> I think I'm the only one who actually did. You guys play it at all? I played the little uh, like beta, the short little beta they did. All right. So, I didn't Anthem. Care for it. Critically, I don't want to say critically bombed, but there's some definitely some major fucking flaws in that game. You know what wasn't flawed about that game? The core of it, the way you fucking moved around the world. That game, the missions were some of the worst shit I've ever done. It was like three different structures, 20 different times. There's literally a mission where you had to open a door. You go to the door and it says to open this door, you have to get these many kills, this tie of loot, and do this thing. <laughs> it is the quintessential. We're be, we're giving up on this. Just go do these three ass random things. Oh no! But that said, like I legitimately enjoyed flying around in the open world, encountering the random events, doing that, getting that loot. But the problem is the deviate, like the different types of loot. There wasn't enough. There was not a lot of loot variation at all. The missions just sucked. Um. The very last mission was really fucking cool. So it showed that the team knew what they were fucking doing. They just... It felt like a situation where the game was forced out because you know what? You put all this stuff in for filler to show us the game can work. Well, you know what? The game works. Send it. It felt like that with the way the story was. So there's a reason people left. And that was because after you experienced the novelty of enjoying that area, enjoying that core experience, the game was lifeless outside of that. Hmm. Which is a damn shame because, dude, flying around as Iron Man felt as good as it sounded like it was going to feel. It was <laughs> fucking awesome. Land and have like a fucking grenade launcher coming off your shoulder. It was great. And then it was lifeless. So them finally killing off the game is no surprise to me, but it's a fucking damn shame because they should have fixed this shit. That could have been a really, really fucking good game. Ah. End of rant. <laughs> so Anthem is dead. Um, good news, though. EA is learning their lesson about live games. Uh, and they were planning on the next Dragon Age game being another live game, service game, bullshit grind game. Um, until they decided, okay, all right, look, we, we've got Mass Effect Andromeda. Clearly, we fucked the formula too much. And people are really, really pissed at us about that. Uh, and then they decided, uh, okay, so this anthem thing that that flopped to so maybe maybe we just take Dragon Age and the stuff people like about Dragon Age about it being like a really good story in a single player RPG that's semi tactical, and we just make another one of those. It's a really novel concept. It's called a direct sequel. Um, no other game company has done this before, and it's really fucking revolutionary. Let me tell you. Um, you don't have to add grind to literally every gaming franchise to get whales and you know mobile microtransaction whales to to subsidize your bottom line. I don't think yeah. that being a live game means you have to be grindy. Like I don't want them to get the wrong idea because Anthem failed. Anthem didn't fail because they tried to do a live game. Anthem failed because they made a fucking hollow experience around a core. Dragon Age is a good fucking game with good lore. If you put that in the live game experience, you would damn near have a World of Warcraft type experience. And is that such a bad thing to pocketbooks? I mean, it's a great thing for them if they do it right. But what they're afraid of is we fucked with stuff so much, so much that we screwed the pooch. So let's not touch it anymore and just print the money we know it's going to make. 
And that's a damn shame because you could revolutionize a franchise. You can bring a franchise up a bar if you do it right. Yeah. But I get it. And don't get me wrong. They're making another Dragon Age and that's fucking cool. It's going to be a good game. But I would I don't want them to be afraid to try to innovate on their games because they fucking failed horribly twice in a row. Uh, yeah, it's just like when you know EA is going to do a live game or Ubisoft is going to do a live game, you generally know what you're going to get out of that, right? There's not a whole lot of innovation coming from those companies in that medium. Um, well, no, it's, I mean, the innovations around the game itself, though. I mean, you just have a negative condensation of EA. It doesn't mean they can't do it right. It's EA, yes, but I mean, they can still do it right. I I would... Pixar, it didn't happen. EA's behind the, uh, Titanfall 2. Yeah, a, a game that's been uh, basically abandoned forever, even though it's one of the most... No, 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 no. That game did really well, and it lived its life. Because a six-year-old or a five-year-old game doesn't have players anymore, that's not a bad thing. That's just the regular life cycle of a game. I seem to remember it dying way quicker than, like, average life. No, that game did okay. And you also have to look at what it went up against. That game went up against a gauntlet of fucking shooters that year. It was the same time that uh, Battlefield 1 launched, same time that World or uh, It was uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare dropped. Oh. It was all like bam, bam, bam in the same month. But no, that was a good fucking game. So but, uh, yeah, I just... Yeah, go ahead. Speaking of Call of Duty, uh, if you've got a base model PS4, you might want to start deleting some stuff and hoping you got room because Call of Duty Warzone might not fit on that 500 gig hard drive for much longer. Yeah, dude, that, that game's a big fucking game. A big fucking game. So, yeah, Activision uh, did put out a warning and they said, hey, um... Just letting you know, this this might not work for much longer because our game is 500 gigs. That's a lot of gigs. Yeah. There's got to be something they can do about that. That's absurd. I completely agree. Like, don't get me wrong. It's a beautiful game. Mm. But let's say you have the base PS4. Maybe, maybe your texture pack should just be DLC instead of included with the base package. And that way, if you want to opt into the prettiness and take up a bunch of hard drive space, you can get the prettier textures. But if you don't, then that's fine. You're going to get a standard experience for a, a reasonable amount of hard drive space. I mean, what's reasonable these days, though? I, I wouldn't be mad if it dropped to 100 gigs. That's still outlandish. But, you know, <laughs> other games have that. That's what I'm getting at. Is like, I mean, granted, 500. I think that's like insane by anyone's standards. Yeah. But I think a 150 gig game anymore is almost par for the course for a for a big AAA game. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What, what's I mean, the hard drive space on like a a modern console? What do, they come, what do they normally come with? 500? Not 500. And that's, yeah, because you have to download. Warzone. Warzone's not a physical game. And that's where they typically get away with it, is they typically have the ability to um, just buy a disc. But, yeah. Anyway. yeah. Shall we carry on? So, I mean, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is 70 gigs. Uh, I mean, 3 gigs of that are a usable game, and then 67 gigs of that are just bugs. But um, still 70. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to use that because that game probably should have been a 200 gig release depending on or based on what we've seen so far. Yeah, that's true. But um, yeah, okay. Uh, I don't have the spreadsheet up, guys. I'm trying to maybe... It's all right. It's, it's just going. more adventures in corporate dick waving. Oh my God, again? Again. All right. So um, the preliminary uh, results of the... Hey, uh, Valve, you you run a store, right? Give us all of your business data request by Apple to the court. Um, the court took a look at that, said, hey, this seems like a totally reasonable and not at all over overreaching or overbearing request. Um, hey, hey, Valve, you need to give Apple all of your business data around 
436 Steam games as part of legal discovery. How Valve got brought into this fucking corporate dick-waving contest between Apple and Epic, I don't fucking know. Other than, oh, we have a store, you have a store? Cool, let's prove to everybody that stores are the best. And Valve's like, I don't want any of this. I don't give a fuck. Uh, but apparently- Sounds like like our name's not bad now, but we know how bad we're gonna look when people see that 30% cut out in the public. Yeah, like exactly. Like people, people already know that Valve takes thirty percent. They tell it to everybody. They're like, "Hey, we take thirty percent. Here's all the shit you get with it." No, don't say everyone knows that. Most people that buy on Steam don't even think about the fact that they're getting a cut of those games. All right, that's yeah. true. I, but still, like that, I really don't want to be in a position to defend either of these douchebag companies because the only people getting hurt by this are game players while all the corporate dick waving is happening like this this is just fucking shitty but now valve is being brought into a fight that they want nothing to fucking do with yeah this i mean valve i feel bad for them it feels it's hard to say that about that big of a fucking company but like there is no fucking reason they should be involved in this yeah but eh sucks to be them i'm not gonna feel too bad but also sucks to be uh, Cyber or uh, CD Projekt Red uh, because Cyberpunk 2077's 1.2 update uh, is getting delayed, much like the game should have been. Uh, and it's being delayed. Yeah, I stole your joke. What are you going to do about it? Sue me. <laughs> All the judges are busy with Valve. <laughs> See, <laughs> the problem is they know that the patch needs to be perfect, so they're delaying it. It's a fucking shame they didn't know the game needed to be perfect and they delayed that. Now you see, Tom, that's how you deliver the joke. Fuck no, you, dude. My way is Fuck lazy. you. My way is way easier. Anyway, yeah. um, so due to their recent ransomware attack and they're cleaning up, they're like, oh, hey, this is a nice excuse. We're delaying the patch. Um, so they're delaying the patch. Yeah, it absolutely feels like a cop out. Yeah. Like, oh, we got hacked. We, we can't release this right now. So fuck them. But wow. it is what it is. It's delayed. So I still probably won't boot the game up for another six, seven months anyway. So yeah, it happens. It's a good game, though, other than all the things. <laughs> I, I've enjoyed my time in it. It's not that I don't find it enjoyable. It's just I would like for, the, for it to be what they envisioned it to be when I finally finish it. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. It does make sense. All right. Um, so Nintendo Direct, they had one of those, not just a Pokemon Direct, but Nintendo Direct. Um, I'm a slacker. I actually didn't get to see that. Um, Tom, what you got? Uh, I actually didn't get to see it either. I caught, I caught some of the cliff notes. Um, yeah. I was too busy watching the Pokemon Direct. Um, (laughs) was there any hints at a new console? Not that I've heard, but Nintendo is not going to destroy the the Switch's sales potential right now. Um, Okay, so the big things, according to the Washington Post, are Mario content coming to Animal Crossing. There's a new Mario Golf on the way. Uh, There's a Star Wars game. Cool, whatever. No More Heroes 3. Um, No More Heroes is a really cool tactical game. It takes the idea of uh, plans for zombies and really like kicks it up a little bit in a really fun way. No more heroes. I completely forgot that yes. Plants vs. Uh, Plants vs. Zombies existed. No more yeah. heroes, right? That's where you have three people in lanes and you swap them no. around. No. What am I thinking? Has been heroes is what I'm thinking. Yes. No more ah, heroes. The wrong egg. one. Wrong or one. Beat them up with a light sword sort of thing. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, boring, boring, boring. Metopia, uh, Project Triangle Strategy. I don't fucking. It's a strategy game. Who the fuck cares? Right. So uh, I want to touch on this. I do remember this. Um, Mario content for Animal Crossing. They're putting in fucking warp tunnels. That is rad. I want warp tunnels around my fucking island. That's really cool. Granted, I had to pull all my weeds first because I haven't booted up in months. <laughs> but once I do, I will have warp tunnels. Damn it. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's really all the direct news stuff I saw. Oh, other than Nintendo is putting another anime sword fighter into Smash Brothers, and people are pissed. Oh, same old, same old. I am excited about Mario Golf. 
Um, I like golf games. I think they're fun. And Mario sports games tend to be pretty fun. So, yeah. But I just want to know when they're doing strikers, too. That's the big thing. Strikers. I need strikers, too. That was a lot of fun. But all that said, Pokemon Direct. It's a thing. Um, They announced Pokemon Snap. They announced uh, Pearl and uh, Diamond re-releases. And they announced, um, I can't remember what the name of the new Pokemon is, but a brand new Pokemon that we kind of handed at Zelda-esque in the way that they're doing it. So those are all coming out. So that that's really exciting, but we've already touched on that a lot. Uh, Pokemon Legends. Uh, that's what it is. It's the new one coming out in 2022. Thank you for putting that in the notes, Tom. I completely read it over that. Yep. All right. Last one, Tom. You got it. All right. Uh, Nell from Valve. Uh, while they aren't fighting off ridiculous requests from stupid lawyers and judges, uh, they're actually putting out some pretty neat tech. Uh, remote play together. But Tom, isn't remote play together already a thing? Yes, you're right, inquisitive audience member. It is. I was going to say that. <laughs> the difference is this. Um, now you can invite anyone. So instead of somebody required to make a Steam account and set up stuff, now they've lowered the barrier to entry and you literally just get a fucking invite link. You want somebody to play Streets of Rage? They've never PC game before. They just have a controller and you want to like run around and do stuff in Stardew Valley with your grandma? Guess what? You can. As long as they can click a link, they can play games with you. So that's really cool. It's really fucking neat. I like that. Yeah, it's, like not, that's it's not going to change. That. It's not amazing, but goddamn, it lowers that barrier to entry. No, that is really fucking cool. Because literally being able to send it to anyone. I mean, like I can send my sister a link for a game. Like, hey, play this for a second. Yeah. So she can see it and then figure out if like, oh, maybe that could work for my nephew or something like that. So that'd be great. That's really fucking awesome. Granted, I'm looking at it in a different aspect there, but that's still, still a that's, reality that's a good... of what it could be used for. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, that that's that's really, really cool. All right. Um, I miss anything? You guys miss anything? We miss anything? I missed that shot. God damn, I'm bad at this game. <laughs> I miss a lot of shots, dude. Same. Ah, uh, anyway. I think that's all we got for you guys. So if you're on Twitch here, thank you. But we got a YouTube. Our podcasts go up there every week. So go check it out. 72 Pink Connector on YouTube. Uh, we're live, Twitch, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Best spot to watch us be part of the conversation. You can snipe our lobbies for whatever game we're playing. It's a great time. Come and join us. We got a Twitter, 72 PC underscore official. We tweet stuff sometimes. Um, we have a website, 72 pickactor.com. It'll link you everywhere, including our Discord, home of some of the most awesome people we've ran into while we've been gaming. Great community, lots of different games. People always in there doing different things. Just jump in, have a good time, meet the people. It's all cool. Just don't be the douchebag that came in last night screaming in a channel that had to get his ass kicked because he was obnoxious. Don't be that guy. Did he really right. just come in and just start screaming? He did. He came in, started shrieking at the top of his lungs in a channel with two Discord server owners and a mod. Like... <laughs> On on the range of stupid things that you could do to get yourself kicked, that's that's up there. Like honestly, respect. Nah, no <laughs> respect here. Fuck that dude. Anyway, um, also be on the lookout. There might be an update to the merch store soon, and it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be real yeah, fun. Yeah, I'm excited. We we'll spend some anyway of money. Um, hopefully there's no we got. manufacturing issues. Somebody else needs to click that buy button. Because I'm cursed. <laughs> yes. I, I'll be the first guinea pig to test that. I still need to get a flag. I really want okay. one of the flags. Anyway. That's all I got. You guys got any parting words? Uh, beef stroganoff. Okay, let's what? get the fuck out of here. What? Anyway. <laughs> till next week, everyone. Game till, on. Till next week. Beef stroganoff. God damn it. Can we just mute him so we can't see that shit? Yes.